Hello everyone and welcome to Total War Through the Ages. In this episode, we're gonna be fighting the first of our defensive sieges, so you'll get to see the basic strategy that I'm gonna pretty much be employing for the rest of this campaign, more or less. So to start things off, we sent that one unit out to basically try and uh, hinder the enemy army being able to actually get to Antioch. But the one army does make it to Antioch and we are besieged and a one of the Byzantine armies are also besieging our city in the north. Now, I, I say Byzantine, I, they're the Eastern Roman Empire. I don't really know if I should call them Byzantine or not, but yeah, we'll just go with Eastern Roman Empire, I guess. Right there you saw our assassin uh, succeeded another mission, so he gained a little more experience as well as a follower, and we're going to mainly be focusing on trying to deal with that army there that's besieging our city and it's a pretty sizable force. As you see here they have another army come up and reinforce but they withdraw with the smaller one so that's kind of interesting. The AI does silly things uh, but yes so Antioch is going to be the main focus of all of our efforts because the city in the north I don't want to lose it but at the same time uh, if we lose it, I would be able to retake it relatively easily. Antioch, on the other hand, is going to be a lot more challenging. If we can't hold on to it now, it's going to be much harder to get it back. So, a couple more turns are going to go through here before we actually get to the actual battle. Um, we're going to be moving as many troops as possible up from our backward cities to the front lines. You know, pretty standard stuff. But I am also working on developing, I'm trying to get an army built up in my back in my back territory to then send forward as a united force rather than just sending a trickle of units forward. Uh, because, you know, trickle of units does keep us stocked up, but again, it also can be really handy to build up an entire army and then march the army forward because it's already a you know, congealed fighting force as where if you're just sending a steady stream of units, those units will end up getting just put into garrisons and other armies that are already existing. So we get a trade offer from these guys here, and we're going to take it because, hey, the more trade, the better. That's better for our money. Now, this is, of course, Antioch, and we are getting attacked. So the silver lining is they, they're outnumbered. They outnumber is about two to one is, is roughly the odds. And But the good news is that most of their units are like spear levy, levies. They're not called that, but they're the Eastern Roman equivalent of spear levies. Um, and actually, I, I say this is the first. No, we've already fought a defensive siege. Yeah, we already fought a defensive siege, so I'm sorry. Scratch everything I said previously. This is actually our second siege. So, our deployment here, they have a siege tower and a battering ram and some saps. So, the battering ram, we don't really have to worry about getting to the walls. The gatehouse towers should be able to deal with that. And in the siege tower, we were try I was trying to take down with all of my archers, just focus firing on it with flaming arrows and taking that out. That was the goal. And then, as you see here, all of our horse archers as well as our general, we're going to send out to the to basically flank around the city uh, because I wasn't I didn't really feel like trying to rush them out the front gate like I did last siege so instead we're going to actually be taking the time to send them around and that's mostly due to the fact that they only have one siege tower and no ladders if they had ladders I probably wouldn't have done that so we skipped forward a little bit here and basically the siege towers gets to the walls it, we don't catch it on fire our archers fail their one job that they had, so we are trying to retreat with our archers, and we are moving spearmen over to repel the assault from the siege tower as best we are able, and the archers are just trying to retreat out of there because they're just going to get cut to pieces, which, let's be perfectly honest, so are our spearmen, but at least our spearmen, you know, hey, it's their job to get cut to pieces at this point. Um, the archers, on the other hand, can actually also still prove useful in the battle. Now, I had contemplated about actually not trying to hold the walls at all, but... I basically decide like it's I'm gonna have to it, I wanted to at least try and hold the walls e, again in hindsight maybe I shouldn't have maybe I should have just let them attack the city or you know get in and we could fight in the city square where we have not a ton of room but enough room that our cavalry could potentially be used uh, they could certainly be used more than we can use them helping on the walls but as you see here, we're trying to move one of our heavy cavalry units over to t to try and fire at the enemy as they're on the walls. This doesn't work. I don't know why, 
but for some reason my cavalry could not fire at the walls. I'm sure someone who's a little more experienced with uh, Rome Total War, or in this case, again, Barbarian Invasion, but again, with the mechanics of Rome Total War, could probably explain to me why I'm in a those horse archers, those heavy cavalry horse archers are unable to shoot at them. But once I figured out that they're not going to be able to shoot, we just are going to charge straight out of the front gate, because, you know, heavy cavalry, we're assassinates, we can do this. Our horse archer force gets around and starts... Uh, picking away at the enemy and this is the first instance you see of me basically utilizing uh, horse archers effectively um, where they're actually doing their job of just running away and shooting and the other thing is is that this is also the first time where I were when I was playing the campaign I started to understand how powerful and potent horse archers can be um, but again you only kind of see it briefly here where they they weaken up quite a few units now meanwhile back at the siege tower our infantry is not doing so hot. They are already broken. Um, the one unit is actually fighting to the death because they don't really have an effective place to retreat to at this point. Um, uh, they kind of got bugged out on the walls. That happens. At this point, this is when we charge our heavy cavalry out the front gate, going for the archers right in front of it. Uh, enemy, uh, enemy archers trying to take them down. They do rout. Uh, and then we're going to just ride past to try and not get tied down by the enemy infantry. Meanwhile, my horse archers have, like I said, been doing what they do best, just running around, not getting attacked, and just shooting. Uh, it's not entirely fair to say they haven't gotten attacked. They are actually getting some attacks, some, because the enemy, most, in, uh, pretty much all of the Eastern Roman Empire infantry have um, spears. Like, they can all throw spears. They have, like, one or two shots of throwing spears or whatever. Um, but as you see here, we charged our heavy cavalry against the sap point because we're trying to prevent them. I didn't want them to break, breach the wall because that basically means it, once there, there's a breach in the wall, they can basically just besiege me with another army and I'm screwed because they can just get straight into the walls. Well, not necessarily screwed, but you know, I'd have to fight inside the city. I wouldn't have the option of fighting outside of it, which is what I would prefer to do as in this battle. So we are able to attack the sap point that forces the enemy unit out of out of there, and they have to actually come out and fight us in the open. At which point, you know, Sassanid cavalry versus Roman, in, you know, crappy Roman infantry specifically, because most of their units here were not very good quality. Um, in an open field, they're not going to win that. So we are at this point. We're pretty much just mopping up the enemy force outside the walls. However. On the walls is a completely different story. Yeah, the siege tower did get there. They have captured the gates. So they're flooding some infantry inside. Um, at this point, we're going to be skipping ahead shortly to much farther ahead in the battle because at this point, I, I pulled all of my surviving units um, back to the town square. Now, surviving units, you're going to notice uh, when I hit make when we hit that transition, the number of units I have decreases drastically. All my cavalry survived, um, but mo pretty much all my infantry were dead. So it's basically going to be mostly cavalry defending our town center. Now, thankfully, the town centers in Rome Total War are fairly large. Um, and Barbarian Total War, again. I, I say Rome Total War because it's basically the same. and it's this, It is the same in, in that and Barbarian Invasion. But yeah. And right now we're trying to pull back with our archers. And flash forwarding, fast forwarding to this point in the battle, uh, we have... One unit of archers, 20 guys left of it, and then our cavalry. That's all we have left. All of our rest of our infantry uh, got completely massacred. So we use the archer unit to kind of, you know, again, they're going to be kind of our static uh, peppering the enemy, as where our horse archers are going to be able to flank around and do quite a bit of damage. And now they don't have a lot of units. They have, like, I think three or four units of infantry, and I don't even know... I, I don't remember how good of infantry. I think they were just lancier, uh, the Legio Lancieri... Or something like that, which basically are like the very basic spear units that the Eastern Roman Empire has. So they're not particularly uh, hard to deal with. Uh, simple cavalry charge is enough to break these guys. Preferably from the flanks, so we don't have to deal with spearmen head on. But um, And yeah, right there you can see me I'm fixing the sound. Because I found out what it is. It's the one hockey. It's uh, alt. A. I think it's alt or control one. Is that You hold that down and you can basically use a variety of hotkeys when controlling down... I think it's alt, if I remember correctly. But either way, uh, that also, so if you hold down, you hold it down and you press A, that also results in the muting of the audio. But you can see the results of the battle there. We mopped them up fairly efficiently. We did take some pretty heavy losses. And as you see right there, they have a second pretty sizable army right there about to besiege Antioch. So we're kind of screwed. 
um, unless I can pull something out. And that something is sending as many units as possible and getting them in, in range as quickly as possible. Uh, we basically force this small enemy force back, uh, auto resolve because it's a straightforward battle, uh, easy victory there. And this is our relief force. It's not a lot, I'll be perfectly honest. It's a very small relief force, but it's all I had at the time. And I really didn't want to lose Antioch. So at this point, it's one of those things of like, okay, we have to try and get as many units to Antioch as quickly, you know, within, like, we basically had, like, two, maybe three turns before the AI was going to assault this assault Antioch, at which point uh, we didn't have a large enough force to defend it against the army they had. Even if their army is, you know, crappy units overall, they're still going to, they're still going to, Big, they're just going to have big enough of a numbers advantage we won't be able to hold it. Uh, and as you also saw there, again, I kind of was rambling on, but you also saw me start to build up a cavalry army uh, just north of my capital. Uh, right now it's predominantly horse archers with some cavalry, um, with some camel riders as well. Uh, that's going to be our cavalry army, which we're going to be sending down to try and uh, harass the enemy, basically. You know, uh, an entirely cavalry army. Uh, it's faster on the campaign map, you know, better maneuverability. Um, and it can be very effective, you know, basically. Like I said, we're going to be focusing on hit-and-run tactics. Uh, so, I'm taking a look at the army there. I was taking a look at that army there, and they don't have a lot of good units, but they have a set. They have enough good units that I was not confident in my ability to win. So, I'm like, all right, we're going to move literally every single unit out of our capital that we possibly can. Again, trying to reinforce Antioch, trying to get a relief force there. Um, however, the results are going to be for next episode. That's all the time I have for this video. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to check back for more Total War Through the Ages and also the other series on the channel. And as always, thanks for watching. Wait, as, and as always, till next time. That's it. <laughs> I still haven't gotten my intros correct. <laughs>